Well, in case you haven't heard the big news today, congratulations to Mariah Carey and Nick Cannon, who gave birth to twins over the weekend. Also in the news, something about Osama bin Laden being dead. Any day that Osama bin Laden dies is a good day. Seeing that we helped arrange the meeting between him and Allah uh, makes it an extra special sweet day. You might be conflicted, maybe not, over marching bands in the studio to celebrate and, you know, confetti and cookies. But there is no question that a big thank you to our military is warranted. We must remember, however, that this is just one guy. Just one guy. A hugely important guy. But Osama bin Laden was more than just a guy. He was, um, he was an idea. And that idea didn't die. Getting rid of one horrible mass murderer is not going to bring an end to the struggle, even if this is an actual photo from the scene. There he is, even if he's dead and looks like this. The reason why is the world is on fire, and it is on fire despite this huge victory. For example, Libya. When I found out the president was going to speak Last night, I thought it was going to be about Libya and the mess we have made now with Russia and China. Here's what we do know that happened over the weekend. NATO launched three missiles into one of Gaddafi's compounds and blew it up. Celebrations erupted outside of the compound. There are reports now that the attack killed one of Gaddafi's sons and three grandchildren. Even though his son's funeral took place today, the rebels aren't buying this story. Now, to get revenge, Gaddafi's friends destroyed the British and Italian embassies in Libya. Seems like a good idea. Then the British authorities banned the Libyan ambassador from the country. And now Gaddafi is waging war on Italy because of its colonization attempts. Remember, this is a guy who has major amounts of cash. He is going to fund terror all around the world. And while Libya trades major international incidents with the rest of the world, our handling of the, what do they call it, uh, the kinetic military operation in Libya is upsetting what we used to know as our allies, as tenuous as they might be now. Saudi Arabia was reportedly very upset with the specific targeting of Muammar Gaddafi because it sent the message to rebels that the only way to get real change is to kill the leaders of your country. This on the heels of the uh, reported newly forming alliance between Saudi Arabia and the Chinese and the Russians, formed after Obama's bungling of the Egyptian revolution. Watch. The Saudis are so unhappy with the Obama administration for the way it pushed out President Mubarak of Egypt that it sent high-level emissaries to China and Russia to tell those two countries that Saudi Arabia now is prepared to do more business with them. There's nothing better than an important source, you know, for our oil, essentially starting to date the Chinese and kiss the Russian government. What could possibly go wrong there? All of this plays into a Russian media report now that I read last night accusing the United States of actually lying about what we're doing in Libya. Whether it's true or not, this is what the Russians are now saying. Both Russian and Iranian media are asking whether or not the U.S. is headed for war with China. I hope not. This is fuel to churn up even more anti-U.S. sentiment than is already usually present in the area. Today, we are able to celebrate the pleasant surprise of Osama bin Laden's utter demise. But we must continue to keep our eye on the ball of tomorrow, where the problems in the Middle East aren't over. I fear they are just starting to heat up. One piece of this puzzle that is likely to get larger in the coming days is our relationship with Pakistan. Uh, something doesn't feel quite right here. Osama bin Laden was hanging out, apparently a thousand yards from the West Point of Pakistan. Is it really possible, really possible, that nobody in this small little town 
knew what was behind those 18-foot walls? No idea that he was there. Or were they protecting him? The reason why this is important is we give them billions of dollars in aid. And we have a tenuous relationship at best with them, even before uh, this happened. We know that Pakistan is ruled by force. So how could this giant compound, this large, be in existence without the authorities knowing about it? How could word not leak out? And how can we continue to throw them billions as an investment that doesn't seem to be paying the dividends? Or is this the good dividends that we can expect? What happens if we stop paying them dividends and stop paying them billions of dollars? I spoke to Michael Scheuer today on my radio program. He's been on the uh, TV a lot today. I like Michael Scheuer. He is, uh, I don't agree with him on, on everything. Some things I vehemently disagree with him. But um, he at least is honest and will tell you exactly what's on his mind. He, he doesn't, he's not trying to make friends. He's trying to tell the truth. He's the former head of the CIA bin Laden unit. He expressed many of the same concerns. He said the Pakistani interests are not our interests and we cannot depend on them to carry out our dirty work. Amen. If you're thinking that our removal of a mass murderer of Muslims and non-Muslims alike is going to help our image in Pakistan, no, I don't think so. In fact, let me show you a video that just might change your mind. I want you to know that today I plugged in the red phone. Yes, Mr. President, I want you to know today and today only, today and today only, you can call and I'll say nice things, lots and lots of nice things. Thank you, Mr. President. Good job. Offer ends today. Now, as much as the uh, the death of Osama bin Laden is exciting a lot of people. Let's remember that we removed the world's worst terrorist from Pakistan. You'd think they'd be happy about it, but they're not. No, and they're not really. Anti-American pro-bin Laden protest broke out in Pakistan as hundreds of people flooded the streets to show their support for Osama bin Laden, who, by the way, is dead. Did I mention that? Where'd the band go? The crowd burned an effigy that was supposed to represent the uh, U.S. and stomped on it. Others reported seeing U.S. flags burning and other anti-U.S. propaganda. We would have brought you the video, but one of our machines broke down today. Remember, this is our ally. The public line is that Pakistan is a great ally. I, 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 I mean, they, I'm there, okay, sure. But wouldn't it be better if we were still cozying up to Great Britain and Israel, who we know they're our friends? Maybe? Is it just me? Sorry. Today I'll be nice. Thank you. I will tell you that uh, yesterday, um, I, uh, my son was sick, so we... Uh, laid together down on the couch and I read a, a book to him for about an hour and a half and then we played Angry Birds for a while and as he would kind of drift off I would um, I would write I had um, an entirely different show planned for you today but the news of the day changed everything but it's something I want to talk to you about um, over the next few weeks I can't tell you how many viewers have written to us in the last few days on our advice. How can you help the tornado victims in the South? How can you help the people in Texas? People are asking where they can volunteer or give money or supplies that will go directly to the victims. Um, I don't know. Due to the overwhelming amount of requests that we've gotten, we have set up a page where you can go and get all of that information. The best we can do at this point, you can log on to glenbeck.com slash help and you'll find links to a bunch of charities that we think are pretty good that will, you know, get your money or your supplies to the right place. And if you're unable to volunteer or give money at this time but still want to do something, may I suggest prayer? It doesn't cost a dime, and folks in the South could certainly use your prayers right now. But one of the things that I 
was going to talk to you about is in all of this amazing devastation, they're having a hard time keeping up with the volunteers. People are volunteering like crazy. You may know if you have been um, reading any of the reports um, that I am leaving this program. And um, we'll talk more about that as we get closer. But I want to show you what we have done on this program. First we came out and we just tried to figure out what was going on. And when we started to see it, we sensed that you were feeling alone, that you didn't have a voice. And so we did the show, You Are Not Alone, the We Surround Them show, which introduced the 912 Project. Be the people that we were on 912 and focus on the values and principles that made this country great. But then we realized that so many people really didn't have any idea who our founders were. I was saying, question with boldness, hold to the truth and speak without fear. But as people were questioning, they didn't even know about our founders. So we started founding Fridays or Founders Fridays. And over the summer that year, we did the history of race relations and civil rights. We've done more history on um, a news show than I think anybody has done, maybe ever. And then in August on 828, we did the Restoring Honor program. 828. It was amazing, which led us here to the 40-day and 40-night challenge. I said, change yourself. And we went to Wilmington, showing people that could give us hope. And then we started E4, the idea, the quest for enlightenment and education, empowerment, and entrepreneurship. That's where we've been. That's where we've been. So now the question is, where are we going? Well, in the same direction. I'm going to be asking you in the next few days to be a bright light. Be a bright light. And we'll show you where we're headed. Now on this Friday's program, we are going to be talking to teachers who are upset at the system. They they love teaching, but they hate what it's become. If you're a teacher and you'd like to be part of our studio audience, I need you to write in. Write to becktix at gmail.com. That's, that's Google, isn't it? Is Google reading all of our email for the people that are ticket on? Don't trust them, you know. Or is that a conspiracy theory again? Write to becktix at gmail.com. That is this Friday's broadcast. And later this week, we will be talking a little bit more about where we're headed. Where we're headed. And on tomorrow's program, something that was missed by the news because of uh, Osama bin Laden's death, and that is Lara Logan. She did an episode of 60 Minutes last night, and it needs to be seen by all Americans. You need to see it. We will play parts of it tomorrow from New York. Good night, America. Pay the attention to those crazy people on TV. Don't hate me because I'm so sexy. <sighs> Refreshing, isn't it? Wrap your head in duct tape, because it's going to explode. America, I'm going to shoot straight with you. We have some cockroaches to expose tonight. Rather tasty. <laughs> oh, that's rich. We're just getting started. <laughs>